I will go through with you. First of all, is the tutorial question in my guru. Eh? I don't know how many of you have attempted the question. Uh, Mr. Sim, do we haven't discussed? Can kita discuss Mr. Mahen je hari tu kan? Last week. Betul betul. Alright, so uh, I hope you can uh, everyone download the question, Mr. Sim. I will go through the uh, solution with you. Alright, to show you. Uh, but only up to total income, eh? we will not do uh, the relief yet. All right. And for today, I will continue with personal taxation. And I hope you all uh, already check your my guru. Eh? I have uploaded the notes, uh, the flyer from Lembaga Hasil eh, about personal relief for uh, this year. Uh, I mean, for 2020, eh? for year assessment 2020. And also um, the personal relief uh, starting from year 2016. Eh? In case you, you found questions from past year's exam uh, based on any year assessment, eh, particularly uh, from 2016 until 2019, eh, you can refer to that uh, handout as well. Okay, but I haven't shared with you any question eh, for the personal taxation topic because we can continue with both Mr. Mahen and also Mr. Sim. All right, so um, for now, I want you to go to Mr. Sim question. Where is my Mr. Sim? Okay. <clears throat> All right, you all can see my screen. If not, you can uh, always refer to your uh, question juga. Eh? You can download the question in uh, our uh, my Google portal. All right, so can I go through the question now? I hope uh, ada yang attempt the question, eh? but uh, I will still go through with you the solutions because um, for this uh, question, eh, we have all the uh, income from all the sections. Lah, eh? We have from uh, section uh, 4B, employment, uh, we have 4C dividend, 4D and uh, rental income. Eh? All right, here we have uh, Mr. Sim, a Malaysian employed as a general manager by Hankus Jun Berhad for the last 10 years. So for the year ended 31 December 2018. So here we know the year assessment would be 2018. All right, so whatever uh, personal relief that we are going to do later on, we are going to look at for uh, specifically uh, year assessment 20. 18, eh? All right, and he received the following employment income and benefits from the company. Um, all right, so this is salary per month. All right, so whenever you see uh, per month, you have to multiply by 12 and eh, later on. Uh, bonus equivalent to three months salary, entertainment allowance per month, parking allowance. And Mr. Sim was provided a new car with 180,000. So the employer provided medical and dental care amounting to 12,000 for him and his family. All right. He was given a fully furnished bungalow house to reside. The rental of the bungalow house was 5,000, of which 1,000 was for the furniture. So he incurred official estimate expenditure of 7,200 7, on behalf of the company. He was given the option to buy 3,000 units of the company share at the price of 3 ringgit share on 10 March 2018. All right, the market value was 450 per share and he exercised the option on 28 August 2018 when the market value of share was 5 ringgit per share. All right, so from here, this paragraph, is, we can see that these are all actually coming uh, from his employment, okay? Uh, Mr. Sim owns a house in Penang and he rented it out for 1,500 per month. All right, so we know here are all from employment and this one is actually his rental income, eh? So the tenant vacated the house at the end of April and a new tenant came for the same rent in July. The total amounts shown the to uh, in the rental receipt for the following months are as follows. All right, so these are the rental income. January until April, 6,000. May until June, nil. No tenant. And July until December, 9,000. <coughs> and then the house was vacant for two months during which Mr. Sim spent 3,000 for painting and repair works. All right, so we, we know eh, these are all about his uh, rental. Eh? He spent 12000 extending the kitchen. Uh, assessment and quick rent cost 720 including 20 for late payment of quick rent. He paid housing installment of 20000 of which half went towards interest. He pays fire insurance of 1002 per annum 
and he has a wide portfolio of investment and he receives single tier dividend and also, also interest from fixed deposit in a public bank. All right, so these uh, are actually uh, section 4C, eh, our dividend and uh, interest. All right, but for this question, eh, I ask you to skip the last uh, part, remember? So we will stop here, right? Because we, we haven't done a personal relief, so you can skip this part eh, because this is um, contribution to EPF and then uh, sign up to pursue a master in business admin uh, degree. Uh, and then these are all about his children. Eh? So we know the last part, ni, these are actually under personal relief. We skip that part first. So we are going to look at uh, section four, employment, eh? uh, income from uh, employment, uh, income from dividend for C and also rental income. So this is how you should present your answer. Saying it, Skit. Eh? All right, so for employment, right? remember we always start with employment. Eh? Kita ikut section lah. So for B, for C, and bawah ni kita ada for D. Eh? We have for D. All right, so for employment, always start with 13.1A. All right, so please follow the sequence. Eh? So we have salary here, 180,000. All right, 15,000 per month times 12. Eh? Bonus is a three-month salary. So you get 45,000. Entertainment allowance per month, 3,000. So for 12,000, he gets 36,000. All right, parking allowance, if you check your notes, eh, parking allowance is exempted. All right, if the employer gives you parking allowance, you will not be taxed for that. All right, I haven't discussed with uh, you the about the share option. Eh? So share option is actually perks uh, that an employee can receive from the employer, which means they give us the share for free, but you can always sell it back. Right, to gain a uh, profit. So here, what he gets is that um, 3,000 units of shares, okay, at the price of 3 ringgit per share. Okay, so the company gave him uh, a share, uh, 3 ringgit per share, and the market value was 450 per share. So when, and when you have here, he exercised his option, which means he sh uh, sell, eh? he sell the share. So to calculate the taxable amount, what we have to do is the market value, not the value that he share, the market value when he gets the share, right? So 450 is actually the market value when he gets the share, not the market value when he sell it. All right, get it? So when you calculate the share option, again, as I ulang balik, the 450 is actually the market value when he gets the share. You look at the next sentence and he exercised the option when the market value was 5 ringgit. Okay, we do not want five ringgit. We only take four fifty. Eh? That is the market value when he gets the share. So four fifty minus three times three thousand units. So four thousand five hundred is taxable. Any question for thirteen one a? No. Okay. All right. So total would be two six five five hundred. Always remember to total up your section thirteen one a eh? because thirteen one a will be used under thirteen one c nanti. All right. All right. So section 131B, car, he gets a car. Uh 180,000. So kita tengoklah our uh benefit in kind table eh. So the, for the 182,000 car, the value is 7,000 and also fuel 1,800. All right. Furniture, remember this is a fully furnished bungalow. So fully furnished 3360. All right, and also medical and dental services, even though it is given by the employer, it is exempted. Okay, so this will give us 12160 for section 131B. And next one, we have the section 131C. But please remember to uh, list down your answer according to sections. Eh? All right, when we look at section 131C, we know they dapat banglo. All right, so that is a normal uh, accommodation. Eh? So normal accommodation, we are going to use... 30%. Okay. So what we have to do is 30% from section 131A. All right. Tapi 131A, kita ada button bawah sikit sini. Eh? The, okay. All right. Before this, eh, our example that I've shown you before, kita terus ambil je section 131A, which means you will take 265,500. In this case, kita ada share option. In our calculation, eh, so you have to be very careful. Whenever you have share option, in your calculation of section 1C, 131C, you have to exclude this amount, 4,000 
500. So your section uh, 13.1a would be 265500 minus 4500. So here, the amount used here is actually 261. 261,000. So times 0 0.3, dapatlah 78,300. Any question tak for this one? <coughs> Exclude the share option. Eh? Do not take this figure. Minus this one. Okay. So that will give us 78,300 or defined value. So when we look at the uh, question here, dia dapat rumah tu. Mana tadi? Uh, Okay, rental of 5,000 which include 1,000 for the furniture. So 5 minus 1, 4,000. 4,000 times 12, 48,000. We will take the lower figure. So the lower figure is 48,000. So you total up everything. Right? Remember for this one, there are the entertainment expenses. He gets the entertainment allowance. He also incur entertainment expenses. You see? Incurred official entertainment expenditure of 7,200 on behalf of the company. So, tolaklah entertainment expenses. Okay, 7,200. That will give us uh, 318460 for his employment income. Any question tak? Before I move on to dividend and also rental. Made oh. untuk expenses. Uh, for each section punya expenses, kita akan deduct at the end of the calculation dekat section tu lah. Yes. So, because entertainment is actually from employment eh, kita tolak dekat employment income lah. Okay, any other questions? Tak ada eh? if there is no question, I'll proceed to section 4C eh, dividend and also interest. So, he gets dividends. Madam, madam, madam. Ah. Kalau soalan tak mention pasal fuel, kita automatic kira dia ada fuel lah kalau dapat kereta kan? Yes. Unless dia cakap fuel not provided. Yes. Okay. So here dia cakap ada kereta je. Eh? Dia tak ada mention about the fuel. So you have to uh, include the fuel as well. Unless it is specifically mentioned that you have to maintain the car at your own expenses. Uh, then maksudnya fuel is not provided. Okay. Right. So we have 318460 for the employment income. And then we move on to section 4C. Uh, which is dividend, uh, interest and royalty. Eh? So, they are the dividend and interest. So, single tier dividend, exam, interest also, exam. But please write the dividend and also interest here under section 4C. Do not just skip the, oh, dividend are not taxable, interest not taxable. So, you just uh, ignore the item and no. We have marks for this part actually. Okay, letak je, everything, just put there. Look at this medical and dental services. It is exempted, there is no figure here, right? But I want you to write it down. So, you get marks for this one. Nampak tak? Dash pun will give you marks eh. Right? Doesn't matter you write nil or you write dash eh. So, you still get marks for this uh, item. Okay? Meda. Yep. Untuk nil dengan exempted tu tak ada apa-apa masalah kan? Maksudnya kalau saya tulis nil ke exempted ke sama je kan? Dash pun tak apa. Okay. okay. Alright. And then we have rental income. Okay, so for rental income, look at the schedule here. The rental income is from January until April 6,000, July until December 9,000. Tambah je, 6 plus 9, you get 15,000. Okay, but we have the expenses. So, kita kena tengok balik lah. Eh? Uh, based on the expenses, which one are actually allowable and which one are not allowable, right? So, uh, the first one, they are the painting and repairs. Painting and repairs, eh? it is called repairs. So, it is allowable. You can deduct here from your rental income. Kitchen extension. Extension is a renovation. Eh? Renovation is not allowed. So, dash the near. And the assessment and quick rent. Alright, remember assessment, quick rent, only the amount of the assessment, eh? not the penalty. Alright, uh, uh, in the question, it is mentioned that he paid 720 for the assessment plus penalty, right? But we cannot take the penalty figure. So, 720 minus penalty 20, it will give us with 7. 100. Alright, remember whenever he has a loan eh, to pay for the house, like in this case he had, okay, he paid housing installment of 20,000, half was for the interest. Okay, so kita tahu half for the interest, remember the allowable amount is only the interest portion, not the whole thing. Alright, so for loan repayment, just the interest portion which is um, 10,000 and also fire insurance is also deductible. Alright, tambah, 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 tambah sini and then that will give us 14,900. Nampak tak? So, at the end of the day, the rental income that will be taxed is only 100 
ringgit. Right, looks like, oh, kita dapat sewa, you get a rent, rental income, but uh, the government want to tax you, eh? but not uh, really, uh, they will charge you everything, eh? because here, whenever you have expenses related to that rental income, it can be deducted. Right, so here, as we can see here, eh, end up dengan the rental income is only 100 ringgit. So we add everything up, so we will get a total income of 318560. So for this question, I want you to stop here, eh? Because later when we finish personal taxation and also relief, we'll come back to this question. Boleh? Do not throw away the question. Ha, jangan lupa pula pergi download kat mana, eh? we'll come back to this question. Uh, so as uh, Mr. Mahin, eh, we'll come back to that question later. Any question? Up to total income, don't ask me about personal relief yet. Sampai sini je. Ada soalan tak? Any question tak? Ada eh? Boleh eh? Uh, Madam, yep. uh, nak tanya yang untuk bahagian painting and repairs tu kan? Kalau dia cakap okay. painting je boleh deduct juga ah? Eh? Boleh. Boleh, okay. Terima kasih. Okay, anything that does not change the uh, nature of the house. Macam sini kitchen extension kan, you renovate, you add the kitchen. So jadi besar, you besarkan. That's why you cannot eh, but painting it doesn't change the nature of the house and we just paint balik. You paint, you repair, you change the room, you change the tiles, you change the door. You repair the plumbing, uh, contohnya kan. So it doesn't change the nature of the house. But if you extend the kitchen, you extend the bedroom, you extend the hall, you extend the macam, that is uh, not uh, allowable. Okay? Maybe yang macam tiles, contohlah tiles tu tak rosak pun tapi dia pasang je tiles baru tu kira renovation ke repair? Uh, kalau tiles so far, you can consider as repair lah juga. Tiles, eh, you change the door, you change macam-macam. Eh, itu, itu tak apa. You change because of the... It doesn't change the the nature of the house, then okay. You pergi extend, tambah dapur, tambah sana, tambah sini. Eh, that is not allowed lah. Okay, any other questions? Madam, saya ada soalan. Ya. Yeah. Cakaplah uh, siapa saya. Dia siapa tadi nak keluar nama tu tak nampak. Ah uh, nama saya Faris. Ah uh, dah sekarang dah nampak. Yes Faris. Ah uh, uh, nak tanya yang pasal hmm. share option tu dia dikira sebagai capital gain ke? Yes. So the share option ah uh, because dia dapat 3 ringgit ni for free eh. Kan? Dia dapat 3 ringgit for free and then the market value when he gets it to 450. So this is his gain lah, the capital gain lah. Sebab dia jual semua yeah. eh. Sebab saya ada google semalam katanya capital gain uh, not taxable. Jadi saya tak masukkan share option dekat bahagian employment income tu. Okay uh, kalau macam ni eh sekarang ni dia exercise kalau capital gain tu which means dia biasanya the difference is that uh, bila dia jual because this is a share. Bila dia share kita uh, when you trade your shares ni, uh, dia dikira you dapat gain dekat uh, sini lah. But for this one, uh, they exercise in the same year eh. Maknanya dia tak simpan. Capital gain tu biasanya you simpan. Simpan sampai uh, dapat dividend and then you sell eh. Dia tak ada kan. He gets the dividend on 10 March and then August dia jual. Less than a year. So kita tak consider dia sebagai capital gain lah kan. This is the share trading yang biasa je. If dia dapat this year and then dia jual next year, ha, itu kita kata capital gain lah. Boleh eh? Terima kasih. Alright. So you include, uh, you didn't include the share option dalam calculation eh? Saya letak share tu dekat ni, medium dekat C, for C. Oh, uh, this one is perks eh. So whatever you get from the company dalam bentuk cash, Dia under 1A. Perks lah. Dia kena perquisite. Ini perquisite eh. Tapi uh, but you must remember whenever you have share option ni sebab tu dia tricky sikit eh. When you have share option here, when you want to calculate your section 31A, share option ni tak masuk. Nampak tak? We don't use 265500 dekat sini. But in our other calculation, we do not have share option. So kita boleh straight away take this figure. Alright? So when you have share option, uh, then tak boleh lah. Because you must uh, remember eh, the calculation for tax is not straightforward. 
it depends on the perks given by the employer. It depends on uh, the types of uh, income that you get from the employer. Eh? So for example, macam sini kan, section 31B, we know these are actually benefit in kind. Okay, he gets a car, dapat dengan fuel and then you get confused. Alamak, minyak, uh, fuel dia nak masuk ke tak nak kan? So if it is not mentioned anything, then you have to calculate macam ni lah. And then we have the furniture kan, walaupun ada rumah dekat bawah ni, furniture duduk dekat section 31B. And medical and dental exempted. So, ada banyak lagi if you go back to your notes, eh, there's a lot more uh, items eh, under section 131B which is actually exempted. Right? Ada childcare service lah apa semua tu kan. If you go back to your notes, so banyak lagi item dekat sini yang exempted. So, it's not straightforward. You cannot simply memorize, oh dalam ni ada ni 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 ni. Eh? But you have to go back to the notes, tengok one by one, item by item, uh, apa yang ada, apa yang tak ada. I have one... Um, I think saya ada satu eh, the format ataupun the computation eh. So in that computation, it actually includes all the items that should be included in our calculation. Kalau saya jumpa nanti, I will uh, share with you eh. So that it will actually at least help you, okay, for section 31A, what should be there? 1B, what should be there? Alright? Because here it's, it comes like a piecemeal kan. Some ada kat sini and then you go to the next question, ah, dah something else pula eh. So, if I can find the format, I'll share with you. But not now lah. Now, Syari memang tak jumpa lah. <laughs> Any other question tak? No, madam. Okay, lagi satu. Madam, I... the, the, the answer that we already bought ni, we have to send or not? Ah, uh, no, no. But I can share with you the solution if you want. Saya boleh upload this. The... Nak tak? The jawab, jawapan ni? Nak, madam. Of course. Right. <laughs> All right, and one more thing is that, okay, if you have no question for this, uh, Mr. Sim, I will go through with you. I haven't marked your quiz, eh, Hazik tu. Tapi, I will go through with you the answer and show you how I will mark your answer. Uh, Say to the marking scheme je lah, eh, but I haven't marked your quiz. Boleh, eh? For Hazik ni pun sama juga eh, dia ada uh, employment income and then he has uh, dividend income and also rental income. Alright, eh, so you all can see the question. This is the quiz question, kan? Saya bagi soalan lain pula. Quiz question, eh? Alright, this is uh, 15 marks. So, what we have here is Hazik, eh? Work as a management consultant with Raymond Consulting in Johor. Uh, on 1st Jan 2020, he was transferred to PJ. For the day ended 31st December 2020, he was provided a salary of 72,000. Well, this is for a year, eh? Uh, management consultant is entitled to a bonus of 12,000, which is paid on 30th June 2020. Uh, the company provides a proton car costing 72000 and Hazik is expected to maintain the car at his own expense. Alright, so in this case, what does it mean? Does he get fuel or not? No. Ah, dia dapat fuel tak? Tak, tak dapat sebab dia kata dia maintain the car on his own. So fuel is not provided by the company tapi dia bayar sendirilah. Yeah, he only gets the car. So whenever you see something like this, like uh, the previous question that we have, eh, it is only mentioned that he gets a car. So we include the fuel. But here, he is expected to maintain the car at his own expense, which means no fuel provided. Okay. He bought a terrace house and hired an agent on 15 Jan 2020. Tenant was found in February 2020. The realty agent was paid a fee equal to one month's rent. Tenant and Hazik signed a one-year agreement to be effective from 1st March on the following terms. Payment of a security deposit equal to four months rent. Payable upon signing of the agreement and monthly rental of 1,005 payable per quarter in advance. So he paid quick rent and assessment fees as below. Quick rent for 2020, penalty assessment for 2020 and also penalty for late payment. He received dividend from Malaysian company and 2375 interest income from Malaysian Bank. So you have to compute total income for year 2020. Alright, so for this Hazik, you only have to compute his total 
income. So whenever I give you questions, I can always continue the question. Kita boleh tambah merit tu siapa, anak berapa, apa semua eh, for you to complete the personal relief later. But for this one, I stop here eh, for the, just for total income only. Alright. So basically, um, we start with uh, section 4B, employment income. Alright. So he has a salary under 31A, uh, 72,000. Bonus 12,000. Uh, total of 84,000. So, dia tak ada apalah under section 31A, eh? just a salary and also a bonus. Alright. And section 31B, car benefit dia, there is no mention about share lah, dental, whatever, tak ada eh. Uh, rumah pun tak ada. So, just the car, 2,400. Okay. So, that is the gross income for employment income, 86,400. Uh, rumah pun tak ada. So, there is no section 31C here. Eh? Uh, and he has section 4C, dividend and interest. Again, exam both ni tak ada, eh? nil figure. But you have to write the dividend and also the interest here. Alright. So, the thing as I letak kat sini is the marks that you will get lah. Alright. And then under section 4D, rental income. Okay. Uh, rental ni tricky sikit. At the same time, you can uh, check your answer juga. Eh? You can take your, your quiz answer and check with this one. Alright, so for rental income, monthly rental dia effective from 1st March. So 1st March baru dia dapat 1,500 eh. Uh, rental uh, for 10 months, 15,000. But remember dia ada dekat sini, uh, monthly rental payable per quarter in advance. So per quarter, satu quarter berapa bulan? Tiga. Ah, tiga bulan. Right, but now the rental starts in March, eh, which means they dapat next year's punya rental this year up to February next year. So for two months, advance rental, 1,500. Quick rent, okay. Quick rent ni, you, you must look at the date of the rental. Eh. Walaupun soalan sebelum ni, eh, what we did was, um, uh, we just take the whole uh, year figure eh, because the rental starts in January. But here the rental starts in March. Nampak tak? So, for your quick rent and also assessment, kita tak boleh ambil 240. Kita kena prorate kan. Alright, so which means from March until December, 10 months. Walaupun by right, he actually paid 240 for the whole year kan. But the house uh, only uh, been rented uh, starting March. Eh? So, he can only get uh, expenses uh, allowed for only 10 months. 200 and also assessment uh, 1417. Uh, no uh, allowable expenses allowed eh, for penalty, okay, and then agent fees 1,500 because if you look at the agent fees ni, <coughs> um, okay, the first time they hire, eh, the first time they beli rumah and hire agent, so uh, tenant has it, mana tadi, agent fee was paid equal to one month, Rent. Uh, there is no mention uh, how much he paid to the agent fee. The peer, it is mentioned here that the fee is equal to one month's rent. So, agent fee 1,500. This would be his adjusted income from rental 14883. Tambahkan dia that will give us total income of 101283. Ada yang dapat full mark tak? Ada sesat-sesat tak? Ada sesat dekat advance rental tu, Madam. Madam, boleh explain balik tak advance rental tu? Advance rental ni? Hmm. Okay, you calculate from the, from March eh. Dia dapat uh, rental from March kan? Look at the date here. Okay. March. So, March 4 bulan. The rental would be March until December 1,500. Boleh ya? Eh? 10 months ni boleh eh? Tapi if you calculate every quarter, which means dia akan dapat the payment every 4 months. Betul tak? March, April, May, June. Satu payment. July, August, September, October, satu payment. November, December, January, February, satu payment. But kita habis, we end the year at the, uh, on December eh? So, uh, you kena lukis timeline sikit kot. <laughs> You have to draw the timeline sikit kot. Yeah. Because the rent start in uh, April and uh, March eh. 
So March, March, April, May, June eh. March until June one quarter. July, August, September, October one quarter. November, December, January, February eh. November until February next year. Okay. So sekarang ni dekat sini rental yang dia dapat ni. 10 months ni. Rental yang biasa lah. So masuk the next year je, you must remember itu dah declare advance lah because after December it will be considered as advance rental. So advance rental dia ialah January until February. Nampak 2 months kat sini. Sini 10 months. Boleh? You tambahkan dia jadi 1 year juga. Tapi 1 year tu dia dah langgar different year. That is why dia masuk dalam advance rental. If the rental starts in June, in Jan tak ada masalah lah. Then until December, then the rental would be uh, 18,000 and no advance rental. Betul tak? If the rental starts in January, there will be no advance rental. Sekarang rental dia start in March. Tapi dia dapat payment for, for one year already. You nampak macam tu cukup lah. Dia dapat payment for one year from March until February next year. So there will be two months advance payment. Boleh? Dapat eh? Boleh, boleh. Boleh eh? Faham eh? Because if you total sini, 10 plus 2 masih lagi 12. But the payment tu 10 months dia dapat tahun ni. 2, ta 2 tahun pulak. Another 2 months rental tu is actually for next year. But remember according to our section 4D, advance rental will be taxed in the year of receipt. You dapat from untuk tahun depan but you get it this year. So you will be taxed this year. So untuk next year, the rental dia untuk Feb untuk 2021 eh, dia will be tax untuk 10 month je lah. Sebab yang 2 bulan ni dah tax in year 2020. So untuk 2021 tinggal 10 months je. Ataupun kalau dia dapat advance juga akan jadi macam ni lah. 10 month rental, 2 months advance rental. Okay. Boleh eh? Semak lah ni. Ya, yeah, the, 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 apa ni? Ayat mention that payable every quarter apa semua tu tu nak bagi you fikir je. It's actually a one year rental juga. Meja. Yep. Realty agent tu, hmm. dia memang dikecualikan ke? Uh -uh. The first time. Katakanlah, now the first time dia sewa rumah, dia kena tax lah. The first time tak kena tax. The second, the, the first time kena tax. The second time dah tak kena tax. Balik pula. Now agent fees is allowable kan? Dia hire agent for the first time. Dia, dia baru ada rumah, dia hire agent for the first time untuk cari tenant for him. Alright, so the payment to the agents for the first time ni is actually allowable. But let's say, eh, uh, dia bayar agent ni pada first time dia ambil uh, agent. Uh, the first time dia buka rumah untuk disewa, dia, he gets, uh, he paid uh, 1,005 for this agent. If let's say after one year, the tenant move out and then they advertise lagi sekali, cari agent lagi sekali untuk next one. Ha, tu nanti tak boleh lah. Sama juga dengan advertising eh. Ya, Madam saya nanti saya hantar satu statement tu. Okay. Dia, kata, dia tulis kat situ belanja yang tidak dibenarkan. Okey. Dia kata bayaran kepada ejen untuk mendapatkan penyewa dan kos guaman untuk menyediakan surat perjanjian berkenaan dengan penyewa yang pertama. Okey. So maksudnya perbelanjaan tu tak dibenarkan maksudnya apa tu? Exempted lah sir, Madam. Tak dibenarkan. Ha ah. -ha. Tak dibenarkan, ah, tak boleh tolak lah. Ya, tapi, ah, tapi yang ni kita boleh tolak lah yang Mr. Haziq punya real, realty agent ni. Ha, ha, ha. First time juga. Dia first time. Sekejap eh. I think dalam uh, in our notes eh, saya ada list kan the allowable and non-allowable expenses kan.
Okay, actually for the first uh, tenant, eh, dalam agent, agent is fine. But for the for legal fees, eh, if you said legal fees, advertising, commission. For the first time, not allowed eh, untuk legal fees apa semua. It is not, they kata dekat sini, um, those are not uh, allowed. If you have like say legal fees eh, untuk first time, first time tenant, then kita tak boleh tolak dekat sini lah. Tak boleh tolak dekat macam. Just, we, we will treat them just like kita kata renovation kan. Renovation is not allowed. So tak boleh tolak dekat sini. Sama dengan uh, legal fees, uh, advertising for the first time, eh? commission. But I think for agent fees ni kita... Uh, hmm. Mm -mm, dia tak termasuk dalam not allowable eh. Dia bagi contoh is advertising, commission and legal expenses too. Let's say if you pay for legal uh, expenses uh, for the first one, eh? for, the, for the first one, for the first time, you will not be allowed. Maknanya if, let's say you buy uh, for the first time and then ambil the second tenant pula, the second time tu baru boleh tolak dekat sini. The first time tak boleh tolak. Dikira the first time you must incur uh, the cost lah. Nanti if I can find other questions eh, yang ada legal fees, commission semuanya, I will share with you juga nanti. Boleh? Okay, madam. Boleh. All right. Ya, yeah. because agent fee kita boleh uh, tolak eh. Hmm. But not the legal and also advertising lah. For the first time you advertise, uh, you tak boleh tolak dekat sini. But agent fees, you actually boleh tolak dekat sini. The agent fees is, is allowable eh. Alright, so... But yeah, if I can find other rental income questions, then I will share with you lagi. Like I said, dia ada banyak uh, scenario lah. Eh. Some ada agent fee, some ada legal fee, some ada advertising fees pula. Eh. And sometimes they use the word commission. Eh. Alright, so for today, so we have done uh, interest income eh, because for today's topic, it would be only on personal relief. Right. Um, let me share with you. All right. <coughs> Next one. Okay. This is actually related to what we have done so far eh, because for personal taxation ni, one person can have employment income at the same time macam soalan kita buat tadi lah. Eh. He can have uh, employment income, uh, dividend income, interest income, rental income, okay, and royalty. Semula eh, from section 4B until section 4F too. But uh, here what we are going to do is that after we actually combine all the income, eh, we want to look at the uh, personal uh, relief eh, because we have done all different types of income except for business income. Eh, section 4A saya tak buat lagi lah. Kita hanya buat section 4B, eh, B until F. So we have done B until F. And we spend uh, some time eh, for the investment income because we have um, uh, specifically uh, rental. Lah, eh. So if you look at uh, our investment income to section uh, 4C and D, 4C uh, nothing much eh, because dividend and interest is all, will always be exempted. 
So only for rental, kita ada calculation lah. We have rental income and then all the allowable expenses. Eh? So the next one would be uh, to calculate the personal relief eh, for different uh, type type of uh, person with different type of uh, income. Eh? So before we move on to the calculation, we should know that personal relief are given as deduction from the total income. Alright, remember if you go back to our calculation, kita stop at total income. Okay, so kita dah total, total, total semua, uh, all the income, eh, kita ada total income or aggregate income. And then kita akan, we will deduct eh, personal relief uh, as a deduction eh, to arrive at the chargeable income. So again, uh, as an individual, we will be taxed at our chargeable income. Which means uh, we have different types of income, kita dapat total income and we deduct all the personal relief given to ourselves. Then we will leave with one figure which is chargeable income. So in order for a person to be taxed, eh, your chargeable income for a year must be 5,001 ringgit and above. So tak banyak eh, kalau ikutkan 5,001 tu, you dah tolak habis semua benda dah, it will leave you with 5,001 uh, 5, ringgit, 5,001 ringgit, then only you will be taxed. But that would be only 150 je. Nanti kita tengok the schedule dia. Eh. So if your chargeable income is less than 5,000 a year, uh, you will not be taxed. <coughs> Alright, so personal relief are only for individual taxpayers who are residents eh, for the basis year, for the relevant year of assessment. So remember, eh, the tax resident ni not necessarily only for Malaysian. Eh, Non-Malaysian pun, if they are tax resident, they can also enjoy the personal relief. Alright. <coughs> and rebates are deducted from tax charge to arrive at the tax payable. So rebate ni last kali lah. The last thing you get is the rebate. Eh, kita dah dapat the amount tax to be paid. Then only kita tolak rebate. So relief is uh, deducted uh, di atas. Eh. Rebates will be at the last uh, part eh, after we calculate the tax payable. Alright, habis lah this one. So this is what uh, I told you before. Eh. Okay, so this one. We haven't done for A, eh? we will do business income after we finish this personal relief and rebates. Eh? But for now, kita dah buat employment income, dividend. So, saya terus letak exam ni lah dekat sini. Eh? For the dividend, eh? uh, interest, actually exam juga eh? interest ni. And then rental, uh, royalties and also others. But you must remember for 4B employment ni, the calculation ada banyak kan? Because we have 31 A, B, C, D, E, you know what I mean? Eh? And then the dividend, uh, interest, both under section 4C. And rental also kita ada di allowable expenses. Sama juga dengan royalties. And for royalties, we also have exemptions. Remember when we did a uh, book law research expenses lah eh, for royalties. So for the for royalties pun, we have uh, expenses eh, that can be uh, deducted from our royalty income and also others. We haven't uh, focused on others lah because others ni is actually other income not related to section 4A until 4E. Alright. Okay. So... All done, now we can calculate the personal uh, relief. Eh? So, aggregate income, kalau ada current year business loss, ini belum lah, kita belum sampai sini lah. Eh? This part ni belum. Uh, because this is for business. And then we have total income. So, what we have done so far, and up to total income, for Hazik tadi, kita ada for Mr. Sim tadi, eh? total income. And then less relief. So, relief is what we are going to do today. Alright, so this part, that will give us a chargeable income. So for chargeable income, like I said before, only for, because this is actually for a year, eh? only for income, uh, chargeable income more than 5,001 ringgit will be taxable. Alright, if you get, if you earn less than 5,000, uh, if you get 5,000 uh, chargeable income, you will not be taxed. Okay, so. This is the position of relief. Eh? That's why I said relief dekat atas, rebate dekat bawah. Eh? So one we have, once we have completed our chargeable income calculation, we will calculate our tax payable based on the scale rate, the table. Eh? So chargeable income minus the tax payable. Uh, so we get the tax payable based on this chargeable income. And then if we have rebates, zakat apa semua tu consider as rebates. Eh? Tempat zakat dekat bawah ni rebate. So we minus the rebates. This would be our net tax payable. So normally the amount would be lower if we have rebates ni. Alright, so relief dekat sini, before chargeable income, rebates is actually in, in in our calculation to arrive at the net tax payable. So rebate tempat dia bukan dekat atas, ya, rebate dekat bawah. So no chargeable income for the relevant year if total income is total relief 
equals total income. Sekarang ni income lebih dari relief kan? That is why you have a chargeable income. But this equals to this, there will be no chargeable income. No chargeable income meaning that it will not be taxed. And the excess relief cannot be carried forward and no refund will be given. Let's say your, your relief is more than total income. There will be no chargeable income and then the relief ni tak boleh carry forward lah. Habis uh, for that particular year only. Okay. But in our calculation up to your exam, don't worry, there will be no case of relief equal to the income. Tak ada, eh? Make your life easier. Tak ada. Kena bagi harder sikit. Right. So, these are the types of personal relief that we are going to look at today. Uh, section 46, 47, 48 and also 49. Okay. <coughs> right. So, for personal relief, 46 ni, dia ada banyak lah. 46, 1, A, B, C, D, E, F. Banyak lah, eh? Because the detail will go under uh, 46 ni. 47 is about wife relief, 48 is about child relief, and 49 is about uh, insurance premium and also contribution. All right, so let's look at one by one. <coughs> but uh, again, eh, uh, what I have uh, shared with you in the notes, eh, I shared with you uh, a handout eh, for year assessment 2020 because year assessment 2020 is a bit different. If you compare to 2019 and 2018, we have something else. So for 2020, because of the COVID-19 ni, so the relief is a bit different. Eh? Ada yang before this tak ada pun relief tu, but in year 2020, ada. But whatever we have in year 2020 ni, selagi as long as the government doesn't say that they will stop that relief, eh, that will carry on until maybe this year or next year. All right. Okay, so let's look at the first one. 461A, personal relief up to 9,000. Uh, ini automatically dapat. Once you register for your tax number, you key in your data, automatically you will get personal relief, eh? 9,000. All right, and then for 461C, medical treatment, special needs and care expenses on parents must be supported by doctor's letter. Okay, maximum 5,000. Uh, 461D, basic supporting equipment for self, wife, child or parent if disabled. Also must have uh, OKU card lah. But doesn't matter which type of OKU eh, you will be uh, or we can get a relief of 6,000 eh, for, for semua ni lah eh. Maximum is 6,000. Alright, 461F, cost fee. If you pursue your study using your own money, then you will get exemption ataupun relief eh, of 7 thousand this is uh, the figure is actually for for a year kita tak ada nak darat-darat apa dah because the calculation once you get your income kita akan tolak relief based on this one serious disease eh dia ada i think 33 serious disease uh, if the person uh, receive treatment for serious disease eh, he or she can claim up to maximum of 6000 okay uh, complete medical checkup for self spouse and children maximum 500 ringgit uh, ini you pergi buat medical checkup nak masuk universiti apa semua tu your parents can claim eh, under this one and ptptn uh, uh, national education saving scheme ni uh, especially for your parents eh, if they save money under these accounts eh, the maximum would be 6000 per year eh. simpan duit pun boleh tolak relief Alright, so, so contribution but maximum 250, parental care 1,500, okay. Dia dekat sini eh, satu you for the medical treatment maximum 5,000. If you don't have this because this one require letter from uh, health provider eh, kena ada surat doktor saying that okay, uh, this person or the parent needs a uh, wheelchair ke, special needs ke, kena makan special ubat ke eh. So this one under this part. But if you do not have that, your parents is healthy, tak ada masalah untuk benda ni, so kita boleh claim for this part. This is, you don't need any proof for this one. It's like the monthly allowance we give to the parents. So, boleh claim je. Maximum 1,500. But what happened is that we have to key in the IC number eh, in the system. Mak berapa, ayah berapa. So, orang 1,500. Katakanlah you have four siblings. Eh. Four siblings nak claim 1,500 ni. Kena divide by four. Tak boleh satu mak, anak empat, setiap anak dapat 1,500. No. Satu mak, anak empat, satu mak ni 1,500. So, empat orang ni uh, kau berebut lah <laughs> siapa nak claim eh. Boleh eh. Not setiap anak tu boleh claim for the parent. Parent satu eh, we register the, the, the apa tu, IC number. Let's say you and your brother wants to claim. Uh, so, 1,500 ambil lah seorang separuh. 
but 1,500 for father, 1,500 for mother. So, orang satu. Okay. Individual lifestyle. Okay, individual lifestyle ni maksimum 2,500 dulu. Lain nama dia eh. Dia ada buku apa semua tu lain. Now, lifestyle ni dia combine je eh. For the lifestyle ni termasuk lah purchase of books apa semua. Uh, lifestyle ni purchase of books. Beli computer eh. Beli early smartphone. So you bought a new phone, you can claim up to 2,500 uh, relief eh. Beli sports equipment, semua dalam lifestyle ni eh. Individual lifestyle. You beli treadmill, you beli basikal eh. The bike is also considered as uh, sports equipment. The maximum is 2,500. Alright. The special for year assessment 2020, there will be additional deduction of 2,500 if the purchase made within period 1st June 2020 until 31st December. 2020. This is during the period of PDPR tu. So, most of parents, dia perlukan computer, perlukan tablet untuk anak dia belajar daripada rumah. So, the, the government allow for additional 2,500. So, for year assessment 2020, lifestyle ni up to 5,000 ringgit. Only for 2020. 2021 ni kita belum tahu lagi lah. This is for 2020. But if I give you question for year assessment 2019 or year assessment 2018, ah, tak payahlah. Individual last time maximum 2,500 je. But for 2020 je dapat 5,000. Additional 2,005 eh. Because you have to look at the date. Date ni ialah date PDPR. So the government give extra relief to parents who have to purchase uh, more computers, more tablets for the children. Okay, boleh eh? This is for your assessment 2020. That's why saya letak dekat sini. Your assessment yang prior to that tak ada eh. And then 461Q purchase of breastfeeding equipment. Maximum 1,000 ringgit. All the uh, breast pump lah what all. Foto susu apa semua tu. Eh? Yang ada anak kecil. But syaratnya anak tu mesti berumur less than 2 years. Uh, untuk anak 4 tahun ni beli tak boleh kira dah. Anak tu mesti less than 2 years. Eh? Uh, for the breastfeeding equipment. And childcare fees to childcare centre and kindergarten. Okay. Um, tu ke maximum 1,000 ni. I think maximum dia dah naik 3,000 lah. Sorry. Childcare ya. Yeah. For year 2020 ada fee. This one 1,000. Sorry, eh? this one 3,000. Right, please change eh? in your notes. Eh? It is actually 3,000. For children below uh, 6 years. Tadi call lah tu eh. Ah, okay. Sorry. 3,000 untuk year. Sekejap eh. I have to betulkan dekat sini. Maximum 1,000. For the assessment 2020, maximum 3,000. Okay. Alright eh, so for year 2020 like I said banyak benda yang different sikit eh. So sorry, childcare fees memang maximum uh, 1,000 eh. I myself have to check because dia every year the relief ni memang keep changing eh. For 20. 2018 pun sama juga 1,000. Right. So for this year lebih sikit. 3,000. So if let's say <coughs> your parents uh, send your adik to Tadika eh. So they can claim for your assessment 2020 maximum of 3,000. Uh, but before this uh, 1,000 lah. 2018, 1,000. 2019 pun 1,000 eh. For your assessment 2020 uh, beza sikit. Alright. That would be under section 46 eh. And then we have section 47. Wife relief. Reduction for wife or former wife. Uh, 4,000. Okay. Yeah, 4,000. Nah, ini sama lah. 4,000 since... Yeah. 2020, 2019, 2018 still 4000 eh. Okay. Maximum 4000. Either 4000 tu untuk combine income eh. Ah. Uh -huh. For combined assessment eh. Uh, and for wife relief, yep. Kalau dia ada uh, dua wife. Boleh. Kalau so, dia 4,000 seorang. 4,000 seorang. Ha. Because dia, kejap eh, saya tengok. Ya ke? 
4,000 restricted. Oh no, sorry, restricted. Maximum 4,000. Kalau ada empat, kira kena share. Ke? Kena share. Uh -huh. oh. Maximum 4,000 eh. Dia bukan, uh, if I'm not mistaken, dia bukan seorang. Sekejap saya double check for this one. But if I'm not mistaken, dia memang maksimum 4,000 with direction for one. And for the year assessment uh, 2020, 2019, 2018, samalah eh, maksimum 4,000. But for wife ni only for combined assessment eh, if, if individual is assessed separately, you cannot claim for wife or has, uh, husband tak adalah eh, for, cannot claim for wife uh, relief eh, only for uh, combined assessment or if the person has to pay uh, alimony, maknanya bayar bayaran mengikut mahkamah eh, and by instruction of the court order, uh, then maximum pun 4,000 jugalah. Because mostly payment to former wife tu made based on court order. If uh, the payment made to former wife tu voluntarily, not because of court order, cannot deduct 4,000 eh. Dia court order je, alimony tu. Court arahkan, okay, bayar for, bayar untuk wife and then can claim up to 4,000 eh. Yeah, wife relief, 4,000 the max. If the wife is disabled, uh, ada extra, eh? Three, uh, additional relief eh, of 3,500. If wife is, is assessed on her own name, dia akan dapat 6,000 lah. Kita akan tengok uh, question later. Eh? For now, we just go through the types of personal relief je. Alright, next one, we have uh, child relief. Okay, for section 48 ni, child relief ni, it's a bit tricky also because for child relief ni, the child will get 2,000 per child. Okay. Uh, below 18 years old. Okay. If the children is uh, above 18 years old and doing A-level matriculation certificate level uh, education, eh, also 2,000. Above 18, eh, below 18, 2,000. Yang sekolah, uh, 2,000. Yang belajar buat uh, form 6 matrix, eh also 2000 but uh, if uh, the child is un, uh, disabled must be unmarried and eh? married tak ada dah 6000 and 8000 per child of 18 years old and above like you already duduk dekat university eh? you study at local universities doing diploma or higher my diploma degree masters too so your parent can get up to 8000 per child even though you are more than 18 Yes, old and the rest ni syarat dia semua mestilah unmarried belum kahwin once you get married the parents cannot claim the personal relief anymore okay but now katakan dekat sini kan you sampai umur 26 pun you belajar lagi and your parents can still claim up to 8000 ringgit alright madam madam ya yeah. Untuk 8,000 uh, belajar kat universiti luar tu, kalau universiti luar tu A-level still tak lepas madam kan? Tak. A-level akan dekat sini je. 2,000 je. It depends A on the type of education yang dia buat tu regardless of the place. So if uh, he or she is doing A-level, 2,000 lah. Okay. okay. Because A-level is considered a certificate level eh. Dia bukan diploma or degree or master. So uh, 2,000 je. Alright, so next one is uh, insurance premium. Okay, so relief is given for insurance premium and contribution. So insurance premium ni ada life dengan medical eh? uh, and also education. So these are under section 49.1 uh, and 1D and education under section 49.1B. So uh, untuk year assessment uh, 2019, eh, the relief is uh, 7,000 or lower off lah, maximum 7,000. 3,000 and insurance may be contracted for self, spouse or child. Insurance boleh atas nama anak, nama wife juga. And the person can claim uh, the relief eh. Ini pun kita akan tengok example in the question later. So this is the summary. Uh, I have this in the notes eh. So basically uh, self, 9,000, wife, 4,000, husband relief kalau tak ada income eh. Joint assessment with wife. Boleh 4,000 relief for, for children. So normal relief ni. 2,000 lah eh for unmarried child below 18 lah. Tapi kalau ada disabled child maintained by the taxpayer 6,000 
study in college or university, 8,000 study in college or university outside Malaysia pun, pergi overseas, Australia, New Zealand, London semua tu, 8,000. Disabled child, so if the child uh, study at a university but also disabled, so the parents can claim up to 14,000 eh, because disabled child ni 6,000 and plus dia belajar dekat university pula, 14,000. Basic supporting equipment, 6,000. Parents, medical expenses, 5,000. Eh? Serious disease, 6,000. And medical expenses, 500. So, individual or family members, maknanya spouse and child pun boleh. Eh? Okay, so now I want you to try the uh, tutorial question one. Eh? It's in your notes. Uh, Encik Jaafar ni, he has five children. Alright, so first child, 24 years old, in 2019, final year at UPSI. Encik Jaafar child from previous marriage. Encik Jaafar incurred 3,600 for the child's maintenance during the year. My second child, 21 years old, been a student at a university in Australia since October 2016 on a government scholarship. However, he still incurred 6,004 on the child's maintenance. The third one, 19 years old, got married on 34 December 2019. She was pursuing diploma course in arts design at UITM and the father also incurred 4,000 of maintenance during the year. Fourth child, 18 years old, disabled, uh, 4,000 to purchase wheelchair and the fifth child, 15 years old, attending a local secondary uh, school. So we have the question, I say not stop slide at the first one because the question ni duduk dekat dua slide berbeza but you have your notes kan? So you can try to compute the child relief for, kita tak ada kira lain lagi and we just need, I want you to calculate the child relief je. For each children, how much? Eh? 2,000 ke, 8,000 ke, 6,000 ke? Alright, boleh kira dulu. Boleh tengok dulu.
Alright. Siap semua? Let's try. Dah Madam boleh next page. Anak keempat. Okay, dah made them. Right. <clears throat> so let's look at uh, one by one. Eh? So what we can see here is... Um, the first child, eh, kalau kita tengok dekat sini, the first child ni, uh, 18 years old. Eh, is that fourth block? Okay. <coughs> Five children. So, the first one, 24 years old, final year student. So, how much do you think is the child relief for this one? 8,000. Okay. Any other answer tak? Can the father get the child ready for his first child? <clears throat> so this uh, child, even though he is more than 18 years old, but he studied at a university, so uh, the father can claim a child relief of 8,000 eh, for the first child. What about the second one? 8,000. 8,000. Okay, the second one is also 8,000 eh, because... Uh, even though he is 21 years old, he is still uh, studying. Eh? Even though uh, it is in uh, overseas or local, the rate is also uh, 8,000. But regard, uh, regardless of the how much of the child maintenance, eh, kita tak peduli. we don't care about how much the father or the mother spend for the child. The only relief allowed is whatever I shared with you before. Okay, They spend 20,000, but we don't care. Eh? <laughs> kita just ambil the amount that is uh, only allowed by the, by the uh, lembaga hasil. Eh? What about the third child? Madam, madam. Yeah. Uh, even though dia belajar tu fully sponsorship, tak ada, tak ada yeah. apa-apa lah kan? Yep. The child tak dapat. Okay, why? Married, married already. Married yeah. already. Uh, married. Dia dah kahwin, lepas tu suruh bapak dia bayar lagi. Uh, tahu tak apa. Even though she's still studying, but she got married. So, once you get married, eh, the uh, tax number tu will be tied to the husband. So the text uh, number tu actually sama dengan the husband je. Okay. Sebab tu the father dah tak boleh uh, claim the child relief. Eh? Okay, the first child? Six. Six thousand. Okay, six thousand. Dia tak belajar. Eh? So if uh, he or she he is not studying, so he only gets uh, six thousand. So the four thousand purchase or wheelchair ni can be claimed under different uh, relief, eh, but not under child relief lah, under medical equipment tu, four thousand eh. So here the relief is six thousand because he is disabled. What about the fifth one? Two thousand. Right, so the fifth one, two thousand je. So all together the father can claim up to twenty-four thousand. So can you see eh, from here, katakanlah eh, we get the total income from, from the father ni, um, Employment lah, rental lah. But uh, the child relief saja, the child alone can give him a uh, relief of 24,000. Banyak eh. So that will reduce the chargeable income. Alright, next one. Madam, Madam. Ha. Saya ada soalan tapi saya jumpa soalan ni dah lama lah. Kalau saya melepas. Soalan dia, uh, budak tu umur 18 tahun ke bawah, umur dia 8 tahun. Tadika. Eh, ah, Tadika. Tapi dia, dia dapat duit daripada atuk dia. Macam every month tu dia dapat duit. Okay. So, budak tu kira seorang budak yang berpendapatan ke ataupun 
the father cannot claim because the children tu dia ada income sendiri. Oh, okay, faham. So, if uh, all children apply macam tu ke macam mana, madam? Yes, they want the children to uh, ada orang lain yang jaga dia or provide income uh, for him or for her, uh, the father tu tak boleh claim relief dah. Because dia syarat dia mesti uh, the parents tu yang tanggung all the expenses. Eh? The parents paid for the uh, expenses of the children. Kalau ada orang lain yang jaga, eh, nenek lah, atuk lah, uncle lah, uh, so tak boleh lah. Dia mesti kena sendiri yang, uh, apa kita kata, sendiri yang, the, the parents tu must uh, maintain the child eh, baru boleh dapat the child relief tu. Okay. So kalau atuk dia bagi duit tiap bulan, uh, then tak boleh lah. Walaupun dia sekolah eh. Ulat, can you try this one? Mr. and Mrs. Chen ni. Dah yeah, made them. Okay, done. Alright, the first time? 8,000. 8,000? Hey, no, 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 no. Married lah, tak baca. No, no, tak payah bayar. Ah, so, no relief eh, can be claimed because the child is married. So, the keyword here is married. Once married, yeah, regardless of the age, memang the parents cannot claim any uh, relief eh. Uh, what about the second one? 8,000. Okay, the second one, 8,000. The third one? 2,000. <laughs> what about the third one? Lupa dulu, Madam. Kalau A level, 4 ke 2. 2,000. A level macam sekolah eh, A level 2000, A level matrix 2000, STPM 2000. And the last one? 6000. Ah, last one 6000, disabled and not studying, okay. So here you have to compute umur dia berapa lah because saya bagi birth date je. <laughs> Yang tadi ada umur eh, this one tak ada umur. Right? Okay, so a little bit on uh, tax planning for child relief. Eh? Uh, so uh, once the wife claim the child relief in respect of uh, the child, the husband cannot claim. So sama lah. Uh, if let's say both husband and wife uh, is actually uh, opt for separate assessment, eh? automatically separate, separate assessment ni. Let's say they have four children. So boleh seorang, the, the father boleh ambil all four or the mother boleh ambil all four or they can uh, divide. Eh? Seorang ambil dua, doesn't matter. That is why we call it tax planning eh? because once uh, you are, you have the tax uh, 
file number and you try to because the e-filing system is very user friendly you can key in and calculate dulu tengok macam how much is your tax refund kan sometimes you can key alamak tax refund tak ada so you can uh, adjust lah for the child siapa nak ambil eh normally uh, that's what uh, I do so kita memang bahagi and then you calculate tengok siapa dapat uh, the tax refund biasanya that we will get tax refund lah because the tax uh, paid is actually actually deducted uh, from the salary every month so normally memang we pay more than what we have to pay so once we finish with uh, the tax filing tu then kita boleh plan lah so who will get the child so sama juga lah if uh, there is more than one child sama macam tadi saya kata lah eh, may, they may plan to allocate the number of child relief claim by each person and uh, if the husband is not working or suffer huge business loss in the current year so tax efficient for the wife to claim all the child relief and then later on when we um, look at uh, the combined or separate assessment eh, nanti kita tengok uh, we can uh, say that it is better if uh, the wife or the husband has income eh, uh, barulah boleh buat separate assessment if salah seorang tu they uh, has no uh, income tak ada pendapatan eh jangan kata tak ada kerja tak ada pendapatan so orang yang tak kerja pun sometimes they can have income eh, rental income you don't have to work pun kan but you have rental income you just sit there and tunggu duit masuk dia but you still have income so if that's the case it is better for you to do the separate assessment but if only one uh, person the husband or the wife has income then normally they will choose for combined assessment because what um, uh, later on and what you are trying to advise the client is also is actually about how to minimize your tax paid kan kita nak minimize we, kita bukan nak, nak avoid eh we, we we want to pay but we try to minimize eh by by using all the knowledge that we have so that's the summary ni just skip and then uh, ni boleh tengok lah eh, because here i have the year assessment eh different eh macam the table tadi uh, this is example for life insurance premium Okay, kalau tadi tengok the life insurance tu, uh, for year assessment uh, 2018, eh, the amount is 6,000. But from year assessment 2019, the life insurance and EPF contribution ni increased to 7,000. But separate into 4,000 for EPF and 3,000 for life insurance. Okay, dulu tak eh, dulu dia letak 6,000 tu lump sum je. You can combine life dengan EPF contribution. So here, uh, let's say payment dia bayar 8,100 kan. So the exemption or the relief is 6,000 for your assessment 2018. For 2019 tak boleh. The maximum for life insurance and EPF is only, uh, EPF is only 4,000, uh, life insurance is only 3,000. In, uh, in total, uh, the maximum, memang dia bagi maximum tu naik eh, because from 6,000, the government increased to 7,000 but they separate into EPF and also life insurance. So basically you cannot claim all lah because for EPF maybe, EPF biasanya eh, for those salary individual ni, contribution to EPF ni memang sangat banyak. But you can only claim up to 4,000 4, only eh, starting from your assessment 2019. Madam, untuk medical insurance lain pula, Madam? Haa. Uh -uh. Ini life and EPF dia duduk dalam satu kategori eh. You can always uh, refer to I have shared with you this one eh. Kalau tengok saya ada share personal taxation. Apa saya tak ingat apa nama Faisal letak. Personal relief kot. So I shared with you from year 2020 until 2016 eh, so you can go through the difference too because you have to uh, be careful eh, when selecting the amount of relief too because different year memang kita ada different types of relief eh. So relief ni lah a bit tricky because you have to tengok per tahun tu eh, for each year. Especially 2020 lah, 2020 kita ada uh, tambah lagi eh. So, Bila -bila, the, yang EPF ni yang dia contribute kan bukan yang bos dia kan? Oh. Yang bos dia tu EPF under section mana? Oh tak ada. Employer contribute tu tak ada. Okay. 
saya tak masuk satu eh the relief for year 2020 ni we have accommodation uh, uh, if you remember eh, for year 2020 if you travel or you uh, check into a hotel and eh, registered accommodation premise starting from 1st March until December uh, dia belum ada tarikh tutup eh 1st March 2020 uh, and above eh, you can claim 1000 ringgit they want to encourage uh, the tourism in malaysia eh? so if you check in hotel for 2020 year 2020 so you can uh, claim up to 1000 ringgit eh itu saya tak masuk dalam notes but it's uh, in here so you can you can go through uh, this part all right uh, for mr mahir ni i think i share with you the question kan Ingat tak? We did Mr. Mahir last week kan? Mana soalan tu lah. So, or maybe I copied the same question here. Provided for my information. Madam, hmm. ni soalan regarding uh, anak yang ada pendapatan. Tapi lah Madam, contoh anak dia punya pendapatan tu uh, hujung tahun tak cukup pun RM2,000. Macam dapat seribu je untuk dua, satu, satu, satu tahun tu. So yeah. kira ni. Kalau tak salah saya still tak boleh. Sebab so, dia ada income. Oh. Dia doesn't matter. Once the children ada income. Walaupun tak sampai dua ribu. Tak sampai lapan ribu. Tak sampai enam ribu. I think dia memang. Uh, the the parents cannot claim eh. But I can check if you want to. But as far as I'm concerned. Once the children ada pendapatan. Then. The father cannot claim the relief anymore. Sama juga if the child is disabled, eh? if the child is disabled and maintained by someone else, not the parents, the parent cannot claim eh? yang 6,000 disabled child tu tadi. Jadi whatever it is, the child must be maintained by the taxpayer. Okay, so kalau orang lain yang maintain the, the child tu tak boleh lah. Mana soalan tu Oh, okay. I think we skip this uh, Mr. Mahir, but I'll go to um, Mr. Sim tadi. Can we go to Mr. Sim? Because later I will share the question with you, kan? Tengok balik uh, Mr. Sim tadi. Uh, share. All right, eh? So, Mr. Sim, you have the question. So, if we look at uh, this Mr. Sim, eh, uh, after we calculate the total income just now. Uh, so, Mr. Sim contribute 11% of his salary to EPF. Uh, he signed up to pursue a Master in Business Administration degree. Okay. So, you can refer to your notes lah eh, untuk tengok the relief ni. And paid 15000 for his semester fees. Mr. Sim is married to Grace who is a homemaker. They have three children aged 23, 19 and 14. So, eldest daughter Deborah got married in 2018 in July. Her eldest son John pursuing a medical degree in Monash University Sunway Campus and is fully supported by Mr. Sim. Mr. Sim bought a new computer for the family for 3,400 and purchased books for 1,200 which are substantiated, substantiated by receipts. He wants to practice a healthy lifestyle and hence purchase a treadmill machine for the family for 3,999. Okay, so here... Starting from this paragraph ni, eh, uh, contributed to EPF, sign up for master. So, you have to check the personal relief entitled uh, that Mr. Sim entitled to. Eh. Right, and he is married. Dia kata bila married to homemaker, so kita tahulah nanti Mr. Sim yang akan uh, claim the wife relief eh, kalau dia buat uh, combined assessment. 
And then the children, uh, you look at the age and then ada discussion about the children and also beli computer, purchase books and also healthy lifestyle. These are all under uh, lifestyle relief. Eh? So, uh, eh? can you get the, the relief here? Because I'll go straight to the solution now. Sebab tadi kita stop dekat total income kan? Okay. Right, so this is why we stop just now. Total income 318560, alright, and then uh, this is for year assessment bila? Okay, 2018. Alright, so for year assessment 2018, personal relief, self relief is 9,000. Wife relief is 4,000 because the wife is a homemaker eh? so there is no income, dia tak ada pendapatan so the husband boleh claim wife relief. Okay, the first child tak ada lah because the first child got married eh. Tak ada. The second child study. Mana tadi second child dia? Uh, eldest son, sekejap. Uh, eldest got married, okay. Eldest son medical degree, okay. So belajar degree eh. So degree, we know degree would be 8,000. And the third one tadi. The third child, uh, mana? 2014, age 14. Age 14, so we know age 14 belajar lah eh. So, bila belajar sekolah, that would be uh, 2000. Alright, and then for year assessment 2018, EPF maximum is 6000 eh. EPF and life insurance. So, you can refer to this uh, handout later untuk tengok benda ni. Eh. Even dalam slide pun yang tadi saya share tu, for year assessment 2018, EPF maximum is 6000 for 2019 tak eh 2019 maximum EPF is 4000 je. Alright cost fees dia belajar cost fees tadi if you get the relief cost fee untuk belajar master ni walaupun the the fees is 15000 the maximum that he can claim is only 7000. Alright the lifestyle tadi dia beli komputer dia beli buku dia beli treadmill kan everything tu masuk dalam satu kategori which is lifestyle and the maximum is 2500. So dia beli semua barang tadi berapa total? More eh? Uh, mana tadi? Okay. Computer 3004. Uh, books 1002. And also treadmill. 8599. 3999. Okay. 8599. But he can only claim 2500. Eh? The lifestyle relief maximum only 2500. So total relief dia 38500. That the chargeable income would be 280. 060. Okay, kita tak nak kira tax payable lagi eh. Kita belum siap lagi belajar personal relief ni. So, uh, untuk next week I will continue uh, lagi lah eh, the computation for personal relief ni. Boleh? Right? So, for next week I'll continue with Mr. Mahin. Eh. So, kita nak tengok Mr. Mahin tu and maybe I'll prepare another question for you. And we will look at rebates and also the separate and combined assessment uh, next week. And also how to calculate the tax payable. Uh, pun kita buat next week. So for today, kita buat the half part. Dalam. So I'll share this one with you later. Uh, any questions? No, madam. Alright. Tak ada soalan eh? So today no quiz lah. Last week dah ada quiz kan? <laughs> there. Eh? Alright. So if you have uh, no questions, uh, thank you very much and I will see you next week. Next Tuesday. Alright. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam. Have a nice day, Madam. Bye. Bye. Uh, you too. Thank you, Madam. All right. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam. Take care, everyone.